I've been, I've had debates with two friends when they were both trying to tell me that I was wrong. And I was- Regarding Jesus. Yes. Okay. Um, And they were like, they were like, no, God's not real. Like, okay, that's stupid if you believe that. And I believe that a lot of people that left Christianity was due to family experiences Mm -hmm. or friends drifting Mm -hmm. away, even if they were Christians, but drifting away from maybe other people or family like that that caused like a domino effect. Welcome everyone to the Renew Your Mind podcast. Today we have a really large group with us today and we're really excited. Um, We have Senior Pastor Paul Gruenberg. We have Associate Pastor Jeremy Teru. We have our Contemporary Music Director and Youth and Family Director, Jordan Kettlewell. We have two really special guests, um, <laughs> they're nodding. You can see that. Uh, we have Logan Kettlewell, and we also have Thane Ulrich. Did I get it right? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So just to kick it off, we're we're gonna we're really excited to have this podcast. We're gonna talk about challenges facing Christian teens, and um, I'm gonna let uh, Jordan kick us kick it off for us, please. Yeah. So. Uh, so Thane, Logan, the reason we have you guys here um, is we like to bring in people with some expertise in the area that we're talking about. Uh, and no one at this table has any expertise in being a Christian teen for a lot of decades. So combined, not individually, <laughs> um, we wanted to get your, get your take on things because also this is a specifically unique time um, mm. culturally and socially uh, for teens to be just living out their faith and you know, the, what I've noticed with both of you, having you in youth group and Logan, of course, uh, raising you because you're my son, uh, is that that's something you both do. And there are definitely challenges in that. Um, but before we before we even kick into that, um, I just want to cover a couple of kind of staggering facts that are mm. um, something shocking and something that we need to be be aware of. And, and we as in as in ministry, we as in the church, the body of Christ, but also as in you guys and, and everybody your age. And so I've got, I've got some stats. There were some studies done. Now, these are older studies, so we can assume that this probably goes. Uh, it's even worse. Yeah, it goes in the same trend as everything else has been um, and goes worse. But there was a, a, study, a study done quite a while back, and it showed that 50, uh, 40 to 50 percent of teens leave the faith or at least leave the church um, and there's there's a distinction there. There's a variable in that study That's true. Um, because they may still have an you know a personal prayer life, um, but their church life goes dormant after high school. That's forty to fifty percent. Now that same study was tracking that same group of kids throughout their youth group uh, years. I believe junior and senior year, and in their junior and senior year of high school. of those kids intended to remain faithful after high school with their time, with their study, with their diligence, Mm -hmm. with their uh, attendance to church, 80%, but 40 to 50% ended up leaving the faith or the church. Um, In another study by the same organization, uh, tracked 69 uh, Christian college freshmen, and out of that survey, 100% of them 100%. Now, these are kids that they were tracking through their youth group years. 100% of them had experimented with drugs, alcohol, and partying after they got out of high school when they got into college, or even in the in-between before they even got to college. And so that brings up some some tricky thoughts. Uh, What are we doing as the body of Christ to equip uh, the next generation to go into their adult world and remain faithful? and continue to be disciples and make disciples. And also, you know, with you guys here, we want to get some input on what do you think we could do um, to be able to, to try to build a foundation that will walk with you, that you'll carry after high school when you're out on your own and uh, the world starts to get a little bit intimidating and you don't have the same structure that you used to have. Um, so I want to open that up. First, guys, uh, you're our special guests. What are your thoughts on that? Can you repeat the question? 
<laughs> well, I'm not going to repeat the whole thing. <laughs> so a, a, a lot of kids go through school and into high school and um, might have like a solid Christian walk, solid walk with Christ. And then they get to college, they get out on their own and leave the faith or leave the church. And they, they stray, they walk off the path. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you guys are in the mix of it right now. And you see how your Christian friends are acting. You see how your non-Christian friends are acting. And you also know, most importantly, what's going on inside you, in your mind, what's going on with you spiritually. So I just wanted to see what, if you had thoughts on that or, or what your thoughts might be on what would help to keep you grounded in the faith, even after high school, when I'm not there to actually keep you grounded? So that's kind of a little bit of a loaded question for me personally. Uh, with people who are not Christian, I don't have any ideas. But if you're a Christian and then you're worried that you might get off the path, the path of Christianity after high school, um, what I would suggest doing, actually, it starts in maybe your sophomore or junior year of high school, start listening to praise music regularly, whether whether that's the way you connect with God or not, because it it can it it keeps you close with God no matter where you are. And music is such a big thing nowadays mm-hmm. that uh, like everybody's always listening to it. Everybody has an earbud in. Yeah. So if you're always listening to it, then you kind of you, you get a feel for what's sinful or not in a way. And then you get to a point where if you listen to other music, it's like, I shouldn't really be listening to this because it's sending the wrong message. And then uh, in turn with that, you get out of high school and then you start thinking more of what's what you should be doing rather than what you shouldn't be doing. Um, so you can make the more more godly choices. I don't know if godly is the right terminology for that, but that's, that's what I started doing. And it's really helpful. Yeah, and as as you brought that up, I was going to ask you because I know that it's you listening to only contemporary Christian or worship music is kind of a new thing within the scope of the last few years. Yeah, um, and you know it would be mixed. You know, we like all kinds of different music, but you've kind of focused in on on that's all you listen to. And there's been I've even noticed just such a change in you. And you've we've talked about that before. Um, about what that does just with how you see the world. just yeah. And I think what a lot of that is, if you know, to elaborate on what you're saying, is like immersion, like you're fully immersing yourself as a teenager, immersing yourself in faith. Would that be yeah. fair to say? Yeah. Very good. Thane? Mm-hmm. I believe that a lot of people that left Christianity was due to family experiences mm. yeah. or friends drifting away, even if they were Christians, but drifting away from maybe other people or family like that, Mm -hmm. that caused like a domino effect of getting Mm. other friends to leave. And their definition of fun with like partying and getting high, doing drugs, all that. I don't see that as a definition of partying. I feel like that definition has gone, you know, to your own interpretation. But I think it goes to like, teenagers getting drunk and everything. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is, all I've been thinking is why can't we have fun partying while like spreading the love of Christ? Getting that attention into our churches and homes and family, like conversations with our friends and like, oh, there's a party going on in church. Um, If you want to come, if you want to come, a lot of people, like my friends are coming. You could incorporate that stuff with obviously without the drugs and drinking and yeah. spread the love of Christ. So mm-hmm. you're suggesting that youth groups could be fun. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying they are fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. there are people, well, I would imagine there are kids out there your ages uh, that see youth group as a, pff, I'm not going to waste my time on that. But you're saying that it's fun. I love youth group, actually. I like the the twist that uh, this this church has put on it and the different way they do it. I mm-hmm. think that's a pretty uh, original thing, and I've grown to love it. Okay, so let's talk about the twist then, Thane. What is the twist that this church has put on youth group? 
What is it that makes it unique for you? I find it the bond that this youth group has. It's a fun bond. It's like a family type bond. Mm -hmm. Um, And the different things we do, most youth groups are centered around just reading scriptures, maybe just around a circle. The youth groups that I've been to in the past, like Mm E-Free and others, we usually just read around circle and do prayers. This youth group has more energy. It's got more originality. We do songs in here, which has a lot of passion. We all sing along and, you know, when we're voted, like if we wanted to do it or not, everybody wants to do it. Okay. And I feel like I could feel the love. So what kind mm. of songs, what, what does the song lead you to? It's, it's more relatable mm-hmm. than anything, dealing about problems in the world and like mentally too. And it helps you like Jordan, he guides you into the song, giving like a, a summary of how it can relate to your life and how it relates to everyone around you. Mm-hmm. And from the people I've seen in the past experiences from a youth group, I can see it's definitely hitting a lot of people personally. And I feel like that's a very deep thing that more youth groups should probably do. So you're talking spending time in worship. Yes. Worship is amazing. I love it. It's mm. probably the biggest connection to Christ I have. And Singing and praying, anything could be worship. And in these other mm. youth groups, they didn't spend time in worship? Not, not the way that we do. They, of course, they worshiped Christ in their own way because what's youth group without worshiping Christ? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we're talking not a band playing, but just... Just one guy, one guitar, <laughs> singing <laughs> with passion. But it's a... Uh, but you've got the summary first. That's what I heard you say. You get like a little summary and you got, I don't know, you got the song itself. It's chosen purposefully I, or prayed for purposely. Yeah. Um, I feel like the songs are guided by Christ himself. Mm-hmm. And they've definitely hit me personally before when I've needed them the most. Mm. Um. And I don't know if that's just because of his song choice or because Christ did something, but I'd like to believe mm-hmm. that Christ did something there. Okay, so you yeah. spend some time in worship, then mm-hmm. what else is unique or helpful? We do sharings. We have this journal that we write down our mm-hmm. experiences where we've seen God the most. Um, I think that increases your connection to God. Mm-hmm. Where you just jot down things where you've seen God, where you're grateful, where where you see him working in your life. Mm-hmm. And that helps you really, oh, I, God's there. He's helping me, you know? He's, you know, I didn't see him before, but now that I'm really thinking about it, now that I'm really putting that work into it, I can see that he's putting his love and heart into fixing my life, mm-hmm. to working into it. And I think that's a very unique thing that a lot of other churches did not do. None of the churches that I went to uh, mm-hmm. did them. And I did like that of how everyone was able to kind of see where God's working in your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if they don't have it that day, they might not have something very like specific that they think, but I know for a fact, God has been working with them that day. So Mm -hmm. if I'm hearing you correctly, you're also saying that you're sharing these experiences with God with the others in your youth group. Yes, exactly. So you're almost like witnessing to each other. 100%. 100%. That's great. Now, um, Thane, you, you touched on something, kind of going back to the original question about teens falling away from the faith after leaving high school, being out on their own. Mm-hmm. And you mentioned family dynamics as well as friends. And I just want to stay on that for a minute because I think you're exactly right. I wonder, you know, you wonder with these statistics for those who've fallen away from the faith, what their family life is like in terms of following Christ, Mm -hmm. because it Mm -hmm. must be very hard uh, for those teens who who are involved in church and have a life with Christ, but maybe that's not in their home. Maybe that's, you know, they get that at church, but they're not seeing that in their their parents and family. Um, So all that to say for parents, living out your faith in the home on a daily basis with your kids is I think very, very important, Mm -hmm. instrumental to them staying in the faith. Any thoughts on on that from you guys? Would would you like to? 
I don't have any personal experience with this because both my parents. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to clue you in. His dad is the worship leader yes. here at the church. Mom attends church regularly. Yeah. Oh, Logan. But I have had friends that uh, have been in and out of many different religions uh, and specifically Christianity, and they've gone to it a lot, but their parents haven't really accepted it. And yeah. it, it creates an environment where you're in church for about an hour every week, yes. one day a week, you know, but you're at your house all the time. I say the yeah. same thing all the yeah. time. Yeah, so yep. it creates this, like, it creates this environment where you feel like you can't express what you're believing and yeah. what you're feeling, and that that starts making you, like, doubt your faith and, mm -hmm. uh, like, like, question God and if he exists. And oftentimes, with my past friends, they had very rough home lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a feeling it was, it had to do with that, but... Mm -hmm. um, there was quite a bit of arguing with religion a few times I was there. Sure. Yeah. That, Thanks, that, Logan. Yeah. Uh, it's I'm, helpful. That brings us to another spot I wanted to make sure that we talked about, too, is friends. Like, being a Christian uh, in high school <clears throat> is the same in certain senses as being a Christian as an adult if you're surrounded by your Christian friends, right? That's the bubble. It's easy. It's nice. We're all of like mind. We fellowship. We worship. It's wonderful. Um, but specifically in school, you are not surrounded by only your Christian friends. Not at no, all. And, no. And, you know, as, you know, in the Great Commission to go out and make disciples, like, you don't go, dis you don't go to a disciple to make him a disciple. You go to someone who's not a disciple. So what are, what are some challenges that you're running into in high school right now with atheist friends, uh, openly Satanist friends? I know that's a, becoming a big thing. Yeah. Um, in, in living out your faith openly in that environment. Have you guys run into any problems or issues or difficulties? Can I go first? Yeah, I'll go. Personally, I have one friend. I'm not going to point their name out. I'm not going to call them out. They're, yeah, we we they're, don't need to use names at yeah, all. They're so. a great person. They don't make it their problem to try to turn other people and like, like tell them that their opinion is wrong and what they believe in is wrong. That's why I love him. Um, uh, of course, I've tried to like re divert him to the path of Christianity, but he has had no interest. So I don't try to push that and like harass him. Me personally, I have had no problems with expressing my faith out loud. I even walked around school one time um, with face paint at this one carnival uh, that we were having this outdoor event. And I got like cr God is good and like a, a cross on my face and I had no problems walking around with it at all. I have very Christian teachers that uh, support my open Christianity. Of course, I don't make it like a big thing in my classrooms. Um, but I've crossed no problems so far. And sure, there are a lot of people that have different opinions, but we haven't argued or fought over it. And I haven't been treated any differently than like a normal person. That's awesome. Thane, and would, you, would, you, would you say that a part of that is how you treat them? I try to pe treat people with equal respect. If they don't hurt me in any way or try to come after me in any way, I have no reason to come at them. You mm -hmm. know? So you let your faith speak by, well, you had face paint on for the one event. How do you, how do you um, express your faith non-verbally? Mm -hmm. uh, or even verbally, because I know, so even without um, like argument or difficulty, I know just from talking to both of you guys, have spirited debates about this stuff with friends. Yeah, oftentimes. Yeah, yeah. right. Like you're telling yeah. me about it all the time. We were just talking about it on, on Thursday. Yeah. Um, th how does that go? Tell us about that. Um, would you like to open it up? I don't know how. <laughs> all right, I can, I can go. And if you want to cut in, just tell me. I probably will. All right. Um, it's the same friend I had a debate with. Um, he was just get, going back and forth with me of his beliefs bringing up like evolution, all the same argument that's been told for decades. Um, and I'm not the most knowledgeable guy because <laughs> I'm still learning myself, but I, I gave as much information as I could. I don't really want to have like a whole like conversation about it because it was a long conversation. Mm -hmm. 
But I, that's like the first time I've ever had to have a, like a massive debate with someone about that. I've really not come across someone that um, wanted to talk to me. And he was very respectful. He wasn't in like any way arguing. He was just wanting to… He had questions about Christianity, how I came into it, and why I believe it. And that's where it all started. And that's where we all sat along, Logan and I, and, you know, my friend. And we all had a debate about it. And I gave him some good points. Logan jumped in, gave him some good points himself. And it just went from there. And so you held firm, you stood your ground, but it wasn't like an argument. You Not at all. But you guys just held firm with that, which makes me so happy. And I, I, I love to hear that. And that's what we all need to be doing as Christians. Um, what, gives you this, what gives you the strength to do that? Mm. It's so easy to falter, in the, especially like you were saying, you, don't, you didn't necessarily know all the answers. So it's easy sometimes to be... Like, well, you know, maybe I'm wrong. But you stood firm, even not having all of the exact answers. Mm-hmm. So what, what gives you guys the, the, the fortitude to just hold strong? You want to know who gives me the strength? God gives me the strength. Amen. Amen. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's all that needs to be said. <laughs> Logan, you want to step in on that one? Uh, for what makes me, like not conform to the atheism. So that that's not really like a personal thing. It's just, it. I feel like I don't have to and I feel like I'm able to be able, like, I feel like I'm supposed to uh, like stand my ground. If you've ever heard the song, great song. <laughs> uh, Love that song. <laughs> it's great. But uh, it's just a feeling and when I've been, I've had debates with two friends when it was just me and they were like, well, isn't it kind of like, I actually don't remember what it was about, <laughs> but uh, they were both trying to tell me that I was wrong. And Regarding I was- Regarding Jesus. Yes. Okay. Um, and they were like, they were like, no, God's not real. Like, okay, that's stupid if you believe that. And like, it was, there was two of them, you know, they were yeah. both my friends, of course. Uh mm-hmm. And there was only one of me, but I had the feeling that I should not stop. And I wouldn't say like, yeah, you're right, because they were wrong. But there was a huge, like I, re- I really wanted to just cut the conversation, but I felt like I shouldn't. So I, I kept going with it. My teacher ended up cutting it off because uh, the class was starting. But And somebody yeah. wasn't paying attention. No, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> But, okay. Were they, I have a question. Were they receptive? I mean, did they listen to you, what you had to say? One of them, yes. The yeah. the other guy, not so much. He <laughs> not at all. No. Not at all. <laughs> oh, the, it, different guy. Different guy. Different guy. Different guy. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um. So the one that who was more receptive, where are they at now? Still receptive, he, or yeah, in a weird way. So he's he says a lot of times that he's like a conforming Christian. He used to say he was a Satanist, actually. And I mm. I kind of, I want to get on a slight rant about that. So I'm gonna. So I don't like... <laughs> I was going to ask you more about that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't... There's... I hear all the time, like, like how people should worship Satan and how he's such a great guy and how he was actually the good guy. Um, and that's all over school. And like, there's people like, I'm Satanist. Yeah. But they're they're not, though. They worship themselves. Mm. They say they're Satanists, but they don't believe in God. Mm-hmm. That make that means they also they can't really believe in Satan if they don't believe in God, because it's it's mm. it's all or nothing, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I've helped many Satanist atheists believe that they aren't Satanists, um, which is not my technical goal. But I get them to atheist, which is slightly better than Satanist. Um, my goal is always to get them to believe that God's real, mm-hmm. but it ends up and they're really stubborn. So they say, yeah, Satan's not real, you know, uh, which isn't true, but it's better than nothing, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but so he, he was like that early, early on in the school year, but I quickly convinced him otherwise. And he was, he's been an atheist for a while and uh, me and Thane uh, have been working with him and having a lot of 
really in-depth discussion with him. And he's he's not dumb. He's really smart. But in religion, he doesn't know what he's talking about practically ever. Mm-hmm. Um, no. And that makes it a lot easier. <clears throat> where our other friend knows, like, everything, every, every way to, uh, like, refute what we're saying. Mm-hmm. He knows the way. So, and he believes very much in science. Um, so, he's a little more challenging. Mm-hmm. The first guy, yeah. I'm going to refer to the first guy as Bob. That's not his real name. <laughs> but I, I don't like saying he and he and he. It's helpful. Yeah. 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 The other guy will be Dave. Got it. Bob oh, and Dave. Bob All and right. Dave. Bob and Dave. Bob is the not so mm. smart one. Dave is the super intelligent one. <laughs> and they are both. <laughs> They're both atheists. Right. Yeah. But one was moving toward. Yeah. So. Is uh, that Bob or Dave? That was Bob. Bob. Okay. Uh, he got a Bible and he was reading it for a while. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think he stopped. And I've heard I've heard him say a lot, and I've I hear a lot of people say this in school. Like, you know how God sucks, or the very opposite. I am God. Mm. I am Jesus Christ. I'm Almighty. You know stuff like that. They, nobody says I'm the Almighty because that's just not something nowadays. But. I hear all the time, like, I'm God, I'm better than God, I'll beat God in a fight. Hmm. And I'm just like, no, like, stop saying that. And I've told him to stop saying that many times. Um, Is that just a, are they saying it because they believe it or it's just a thing to say? I don't know, but it's, whether they believe it or they're just saying it, it's bad either way. Because that's, totally both agree. Blasphemy. I was just Absolutely. wondering yeah. what you, what you. Uh, Bob, I think, says it to, <laughs> to uh, get me riled up. Yeah. And yeah. Absolutely. That's, I don't. Yeah. I really don't like that because, like, it do, it does get me like, come on, man. But it's also like, he's he's blaspheming. Is that the right word? Yes. Mm-hmm. Blaspheming by doing that, and that's just that's, that's just not a way to do it. You know, like, there's, sin. he he could say he doesn't like a lot of things, and that'll get me mad in a lot of ways. But that's just not one of them I don't think anybody should be saying. Yeah. So what are you guys learning off of these two guys, um, Bob and Dave? What are you learning from them that's either refining your own story or helping you to uh, develop uh, better words or phrases or arguments to help them? And I hate to use the word arguments because I think uh, arguments are, there's a place for it to speak truth and love, but how are you relationally helping them to move toward Christ? Pastor, if you don't mind, can we put a pin in that question? Boys, you are doing uh, such a wonderful job. Would you mind joining us for another pod? Because we have to wrap up. Can you join us for another podcast for the I'd next one? I'd love to. Yeah, because I ha- I've got some other questions. Yeah, you too, guys are giving so. us so much great information. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I'll stay. Um, cool. I, but I, I want to say before we close, uh, you guys are doing such an awesome job. Um, you're going to take them to pizza tonight? Finding what's called a, a target-rich environment. I'll take pizza. Which is... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, which he, got, is, he got me happy. You're, you guys are going outside of the Christian bubble and planting seeds, mm-hmm. and that is so important. Yeah. And I'm just, I'm just... I'm so happy to hear these stories. Yeah. I do have something to comment on that on the next one. Yes, next oh. one. Boy, seasoned. Okay. So thank you both. And I know you're going to come back for the next podcast, but thank you so much. Um, We come to you from the Gaylord Methodist Church, and um, we have a 9 a.m. traditional service and a 1045 contemporary service on Sunday. We also have every second and fourth Wednesday uh, encountering God service, and we'd love to have you join us in person for both of them. But if you can't, we also have it on Facebook and YouTube. If you have any questions at all, call the office 989-732-5380, or you can Google us and check out our website. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, we look forward to having these two back on next week. Thanks. Thanks.